What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Daynator channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you the four things I think every DIY mechanic should pick up from Harbor Freight. All right guys, so if you're anything like me, then you're pretty budget conscious. You price point makes a big difference when it comes to buying the tools and supplies you need to be able to work on your own cars. Now I've been working on my own cars for a long time. I don't like to spend money and I don't like to, to buy tools if I don't need them. And I'll go into a store and I'll have a tool that I think would be really nice to have in my hand and I'll walk around and by the time I am ready to go, I've talked myself out of it because I really don't need it. I've got tools that can get the job done. Yeah, this tool may make it a little bit easier for me, but I've got something at home that already gets the job done. I guess what I'm saying is I don't impulse buy on tools. So this past Christmas, I was able to get some Christmas money that I thought, you know what? I think I want to actually use this to purchase something that I wouldn't normally purchase for myself. Maybe something that would make my life just a little bit easier. So I just went to Harbor Freight and picked up a few things I think will make my life easier. And I actually think that these are four must-haves every DIY mechanic should have in their garage. All right, so the first item is actually something I've featured on my channel before. Check out this link right here. It is the five drawer tool cart from Harbor Freight, the US General brand. Now I would recommend pretty much any US General tool cart, tool chest, tool cabinet, whatever. I think that pound for pound, they're the best value of tool carts, tool chests on the market. I have been thoroughly impressed and satisfied with this tool cart. I love the fact that this is a tool chest on wheels and I can just roll this out of my garage on my patio, get my work done out there. It makes my tools come to me and I don't have to come in and out of my garage. 500 times I have all my tools right here in one spot. So again, if you want to see the unboxing assembly of this tool cart and get a little bit more of the specs of this thing, check out the link in the description below. When I first bought this thing, it was about like $220 to $240, whatever it was, I had a coupon for it. I haven't seen coupons for this particular unit lately, and I have noticed that the price has gone up. But I will say, even though the price has gone up a little bit, it's still well worth it for the function and the utility of this tool cart. Again, I highly recommend it, and I've been highly satisfied with it. There are a few things that I want to do to it to maybe kind of upgrade it just a little bit, like a rubber mat for the drawers. But again, if you want to get a closer look at this tool cart, check out my video in the link in the description below. All right, the next item I would highly recommend is this 40-inch Creeper from Pittsburgh Automotive, Harbor Freight. I can't understand why I went so long in my life without something like this. This is one of those tools that I always saw as I don't necessarily need it because I'm like, why do I need this? I mean, I can get up and down off the ground. I can scoot underneath the vehicle. Why do I spend money on something that I don't necessarily need? And since I've purchased it and have used it a couple times, I think, Dan, you're an idiot. You needed this. This thing has done so much to help my back getting out from underneath the vehicle and uh, scooting around and being able to see underneath my vehicles. So again, this is a Pittsburgh Automotive. It is a 40 inch creeper. It's one solid piece, high impact PVC frame. It is oil and solvent resistant. It's got two little tool trays here. It's not gonna rust. It's got this padded headrest, so that's nice. It's got really nice swivel casters on it. And I'll tell you, this thing, I've rolled it around on my concrete patio out there and it is smooth as silk. It's got this nice carrying handle. I've got a hook over here, I can get it out of the way. So that's nice. So again, it's just one of those items that you just kind of think, why spend the money? I don't necessarily need it. I'm perfectly capable of getting out from underneath the vehicle and working underneath the vehicle without one of those things. But uh, now that I've purchased it, I can't believe that I went this long without one. Off the top of my head right now, I can't think of what I paid for it, but here's what I paid for it right here. It's a pretty decent price. It's pretty competitive with other ones in the market. So that's number two on my recommendation list. Let's look at number three. Okay, so the third thing that I think is a must have for any DIY mechanic from Harbor Freight is the set of Daytona three ton heavy duty floor jacks. 
Now you're probably thinking, Daniel, isn't there a problem with the Harbor Freight floor jacks? Well, they, they did have an issue, a recall on some of their, I believe it was their Pittsburgh branded one. So I did have that thought in my mind when looking at buying some Harbor Freight. I looked into these and they are engineered to comply with industry safety standards. There is a new kind of a design with these that I believe they've addressed that issue. So let's crack this box open and I'll show you what I'm talking about. One big safety feature for this three ton heavy duty floor jack is something that, that really turned me on to this was a really strong heavy duty locking pin. All right, looking down this jack stand, you can see the pawl right there. Now, I think the issue with the recall was the pawl was not long enough and wasn't fitting and making good contact with the teeth of the jack post. So if the vehicle got shifted or moved, the pawl would come out from it and it would just fall. So a nice new safety feature with this is dual safety pins. You can see right here, the pawl fits into that groove of the post really nicely. So there's a much more robust connection point right there. And then up here, this arm does not wiggle very much at all. It's a very nice tight opening. And then you've got the safety pin. You can see the teeth of the post right there. And then the safety pin acts as another pawl. And then you've got this pin that goes into the hole and keeps that locking pin from accidentally getting hit and pushing out of the jack stand. So even if I happen to bump this handle, that post is not gonna fall. I'm gonna take this pin out, remove that. You can see what I mean by this post falling. If you hit the handle, it'll drop the post. So I'm really happy to see this dual locking pin situation here. One other thing that's pretty nice about this jack stand set is this stop tab. So if you look at this post, you can see that there's this raised portion once you put the hammer down into the jack stand, hit this tab and bend it inward towards the post. That way, when you go to raise the jack, it'll hit that spot on the post so you don't overextend the post out of the jack stand to avoid injury and failure with the jack stand. So the thing is, once you bend that in, you can't get this post out, which that could be an issue with you or not. But it is nice to know that that's a feature you can utilize. So the way these things are built, I have confidence that they'll do a great job for me and my shop as I work on my vehicles. All right, let's take a look at the fourth thing that I think every DIY mechanic should have in their shop from Harbor Freight. This puppy's heavy. right here that needs to come out so that this handle can lift so we'll just pull this out and down inside there is that square shape this thing goes on the end of it and there's this bolt right here that needs to loosen so that it'll fit on that notch whenever that finally gets to set down on there okay so that's in there and then the handle fits down inside there with this little push pin. Cool. All right, there is a way to maintenance this. Uh, there's a grease circ right here. That's nice to be able to keep that pivot nice and lubed. And then the service panel can be removed with these four screws. And that panel comes off. And then here's where you would install more hydraulic fluid for the piston. In the owner's manual, they've got instructions on how to fill it properly and bleed air out. Comparing the Daytona 3-ton to my Husky 2.5-ton, this thing does look a whole lot more robust than that thing. But uh, this thing has done me well. I've had it for nigh on to 20 years. We'll see how this one stacks up over the years. Let me just show you the difference in profile and the main reason why I bought the Daytona. You can see that the saddle for the jack is considerably higher on my old jack than the new one. The Daytona is roughly three and a half inches from the ground. My Husky is five and a half. 
So the Daytona is going to slide under the Camaro much easier, and that is a big plus. All right, with the old jack, you got to use the handle to turn the screw to lock the pressure. And you throw that in there like that. The thing I do like about my Husky, it is a single pump, pretty much lifts the arm all the way up on the first pump. So that is a plus. So the Husky lifts to 21 inches and the Daytona lifts to about 20 and a quarter. So three quarters of an inch difference. Is that big of a deal? I don't know. And you take the handle out and you unscrew the piston and it lowers. With the Daytona, you just turn the handle. And that I like a lot. All right, taking a look at the features on the box, you got a rapid pump that quickly elevates the vehicle, premium rear swivel casters for 360 degree mobility, 360 degree jack saddle with a non-slip rubber pad, that's pretty nice. And again, 20 inch maximum lift height. And also lists universal joint release for precise load control, super tough precision weld steel construction with industrial grade finish, knurled grip handle for precise control, includes high quality foam pad to prevent vehicle damage. So that's a nice touch and that texture makes it nice and easy to grip that bar. All right, guys, well, that's my opinion of the four must-haves from Harbor Freight. I think that you get a pretty good product for the price, and I'm looking forward to getting many years of usage out of all these things. I want to hear from you. Leave a comment below. What tools or items do you recommend for the average automotive DIY dude to stock his garage to be able to get the jobs done and become a real mechanical hero for himself or his family? If you wouldn't mind doing that, I would greatly appreciate it, and you never know. You might be helping a guy at all right, that wraps up this video. Stay tuned for more from the Dan Nader channel. As always, God bless. Thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that like switch on your way out. We'll see you next time.